conflict has evolved. So we are seeing conflicts lasting longer. Uh, we are also seeing uh, conflicts happening in urban areas closer to civilian populations. And the biggest number being caught in these conflicts is actually that of children. Numerous cases of uh, violations and abuses against children, both by the, within the uh, an appreciation by the AU and the UN, that there was actually a need to strengthen the mechanisms. We are implementing a Pan-African program on the protection of children in situations of armed conflict. And this work is uh, supported by the Swedish government through the Swedish Development Corporation. We needed a comprehensive training package that has uh, more or less an acceptable African philosophy on how we need to protect children. So that's a, that's a uh, strand of work we we committed to, and we did manage to get, for example, within the Eastern African Standby Force member states' point of view, all the member states of the Eastern Africa Standby Force um, adopting a training package and a, and a curriculum and committing to implement it with their member states. So this was signed off by, by, uh, signed off by the policy organ meeting of the Eastern Africa Standby Force. Et c'est ainsi que SEI a, dans son plan d'action 2018, en partenariat donc avec les forces armées, a, inclu, a intégré l'activité de formation des experts formateurs. Donc à travers le projet ICPAPSA, donc on a fait une formation d'experts de, avec pour objectif de faire d'eux des personnes ressources à disposition de l'armée au sein de l'armée qui vont maintenant assurer, euh, assurer un peu l'accompagnement de tout le processus, euh, toutes les activités qui seraient liées un peu à, au, au, comment dirais-je, au droit et protection de l'enfant au, au sein de ce, des armées. The work is beginning to pick traction because on capacity building, uh, we have seen like uh, Uganda People's Defense Forces have actually moved quite a number of steps forward. So currently UPDF is already having a more systematic way of delivering the training. Uh, we have trainers of trainers across all their training wings. We also have a very elaborate pre-deployment training on child protection. And over a period of time, we've seen them deploying about over 9,000 soldiers who've been trained on child protection, who've gone on mission. We've also have uh, undertaken a debrief with the same soldiers who've gone in mission and coming back and also giving their feedback in terms of pre-training, in mission uh, uh, work and coming back and debriefing to see how we keep improving on the program and also the lessons learned and how this kind of training supported their stream of work. When you go like to West Africa with Senegal, you begin to see they, they have a different model where they've identified a, a system where they work with child protection focal points across the different barracks and military institutions. And then these uh, focal points take lead uh, uh, on how they deliver child protection across. But at a headquarter level, they, they also have a child protection lead who then co uh, mainly provides like oversight and coordination across these different institutions. Um, the models work for, for different countries, so it's not one shoe fits all. Vous avez un pool d'instructeurs, ils appellent ça instructeurs, qui aujourd'hui sont capables de faire les formations de formateurs. Et systématiquement, quand je prends le cas du Sénégal, dans toutes les écoles de formation, que ça soit militaire, mais aussi gendarmes ou même police, euh, la protection de l'enfant en situation d'urgence est systématiquement intégrée dans la formation des personnes qui vont être déployées. The setup is the child protection focal point within the, uh, the, Ivory, the Côte d'Ivoire Armed Forces is actually also the legal advisor to the Chief of Defense Forces. These positions, they work to be very close to the decision making. And on that front, uh, you, you can actually see how far Côte d'Ivoire has come from the point when they were listed for recruitment and use of children and how they implemented their 
action plan from the UN Security Council uh, to for them to get out of the of the list, the Secretary General's list. So the um, that just goes to emphasize that with every country, it's a very unique process to work with them. So you look at uh, tailoring a program that works with, for their context. <laughs> Pourquoi on a qui Parce que bon, ça fait maintenant pratiquement cinq ans, euh, non plutôt quatre ans que les gens ont intégré cet aspect. Mais le fait que ces formations sont venues apporter ont une nouvelle chose. Les armées, quand elles sont déployées dans les théâtres, elles savent comment interagir avec les enfants. Et ça, c'était pas vraiment évident auparavant. Trainings and capacity building alone do not resolve the bigger problem. We still have, even in cases where troops have been trained, civilians are aware or have the capacity or the police, we still see the same people uh, committing violations against children. So we did introduce in our work uh, an accountability strand. We decided to, to, to undertake a process of looking at what mechanisms exist at the national regional, continental and international level in terms of mechanisms for accountability for children affected by armed conflict. And all that information was put together to come up with a mapping of child protection accountability mechanisms in armed conflict in Africa. Because much as we've seen that these troops are deployed to a mission context, it will be important to understand what mechanisms exist at their national level in their home states or in the sending countries that are able to address violations committed against children. Our accountability strand focuses on four broad elements again, where we are looking at um, the strengthening of normative frameworks and norms. Uh, to, uh, and these are we are looking at the legal regime in country or within the, in, within the regional or continental global context. Two, the other component we are looking at is in terms of uh, how do we hold perpetrators who commit these violations to account? And then third, how do we deter future violations? But then when all these three things are done, we still need to get back to the point where we ask this child who's been abused, this child who's been violated, this community that lives with these children, how do we support those children, that community to get on? with their lives. And so the, 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 the bit about rebuilding the lives of children, empowering children becomes a critical part of the conversations. We do recognize that the, even though there are, there are violations, but there are still quite some significant progress. So as, as an organization, as Save the Children, we did a, an assessment or a mapping assessment of what exists in the continent and how it also links to global mechanisms. And uh, there are quite strong measures that have been put in place both at international, continental and even at national level. Uh, the challenge that still remains is the implementation. And on implementation is not just about saying we have this that needs to be implemented, but it's also putting the very basic, uh, st having basic steps that help you execute. So for example, breaking down a, a set of laws into practical documents like standard operating procedures, your, inv your rules of procedure, your investigation guidance, very practical steps. Also the other bit is also like how do you also have that complete that accountability loop working with these institutions that yes even though you are dealing with cases I think the transparency and accountability to come out and speak about and actually inform the public about what you're doing is important so we are working on those and there is quite a uh, pro quite a process uh, being taken up in terms of the two countries we are piloting with to build on these mechanisms we have our knowledge management and advocacy platform where we work on uh, bringing people together, different institutions, different actors to learn from each other. Our investment here is to build a body of evidence, uh, a platform of learning, where we bring all these actors together to learn from each other, to build 
models that can be replicated elsewhere. So what is working in Uganda, how can it be shared with other countries and for them to pick up these and build on, the, on those lessons? Instead of making mistakes that other people have learned from, we provide a platform where people can learn and you, you actually reduce the lag time. How effective are they in responding to challenges? For the last three years, the project has partnered with research institutions and think tanks to support the development of evidence-based policy and practice around child protection and peace support operations. And this has manifested in three main results areas that include um, research and evidence generation. Um, two is development of knowledge products that has continued to reinforce on efforts around policy and even programming in peace support operations. And also um, the last area being joint learning events that allows actors in peace support operations to come together and share learnings and best practices towards um, improving and preventing child rights violation in situations of conflict. Other, other bit is also in terms of how we advocate for policy change or for work that needs to, to change. An example is currently part of what we're investing quite a bit of our time is on the development of a general comment on children affected by armed conflict by the Africa Committee of Experts that basically also begins to unpack the Article 12 of the African Charter in particular and make it more responsive to the context of children currently uh, which uh, we, we feel the current article does not uh, address fully. So that's part of like some of our advocacy work we are doing. We are also looking at uh, how do we advocate for member states to do much more in terms of dealing with grave violations. So advocating for stronger political commitment in terms of holding perpetrators to account, uh, setting up mechanisms that prevent future violations, uh, ensuring that also that there is a harmonized legal regime that, uh, man, uh, that begins to deal with the duality and the multiplicity of legal regimes such that if, if a child is, is abused by a soldier coming from a certain country, that duality and multiplicity doesn't necessarily do injustice to the child. So those are some of the conversations we are pushing through advocacy work. For our advocacy messages, we are calling on world leaders to ensure that we have proper legal and normative frameworks that ensure the rights of children are, are protected even in situations of conflict. Secondly, we are calling on world leaders to ensure that perpetrators are held to account. Those who have violated the rights of children are taken through the proper justice system to ensure children receive the right of justice. Thirdly, we are calling on world leaders to ensure that we have put measures in place that will deter any future occurrence or any loops that would allow perpetrators to continue violating the rights of children in situations of conflict. And lastly, we are calling on world leaders to ensure that we have the right investment that is given towards the support of children in helping them rebuild their lives. The other important strand for us is then all this we are doing for children. But at what point do we connect with children? And this is where we've deliberately invested in uh, getting to work with children either through uh, research with children where they document on issues that affect them uh, in situations of conflict. Uh, we've also are uh, working on children to come up with communication packages. This could be podcasts, short animated videos, reports, 
that then we, that can be used to amplify the children's voices uh, when it comes to situations of conflict. Within the project, we've worked um, in various countries and we started off in Mali and South Sudan. So during the consultations, the children were actually able to uh, talk to us about the issues that they had faced since the conflict started. And after those consultations, there was a declaration or communique that was done by the children of Mali, which was actually presented to the president and the parliament. En Afrique de l'Ouest, dans les zones touchées par le conflit, comme Gao, les enfants ont pu réellement nous dire quels étaient leurs vécus, euh, mais quelles étaient tout simplement leurs craintes au-delà des violations. Donc aujourd'hui, je pense que c'est uh, disons a paquet d'informations qui peut renseigner aussi bien le projet ICPAPSA. Actors, both from an African Union point of view, uh, from a regional, regional point of view, we are working with the Eastern Africa Standby Force, ECOWAS Standby Force, the SADAC Standby Force, uh, also with the training centers of excellence to just ensure that the trainings we are delivering are of high standard and we are consistently reviewing to ensure we are contextually relevant, also to ensure that the any new changes that are happening in the policy environment is being integrated in these courses. Uh, part of that then has meant we do reviews of the training. Uh, we've also had to ensure that uh, the package, the training package you're offering is also engendered. So really looking at, are we just not, we are not just looking at children gen, in, in a very generic manner, but you're also very specific in terms of boys and girls are affected by conflicts differently. And this also means you're also looking at uh, beyond gender, looking at it from a life cycle point of view to, to keep building a program that is responsive to these needs of children at different stages.